just a little uh, fishing rod update. Um, so still playing with plastic, so I've been pretty busy at work, so I haven't been able to do any of the, the bigger fun things I would like to do, but I've been playing with plastic. Um, had a go at making a, a plunger, because I said to you to uh, squash the uh, high density polyethylene together. This is a source from uh, uh, old oil cans in the farm. Um, it was a bit of a fail. Um, I did get a lathe. I chucked for him at the lathe, which was fun, so I had to uh, uh, turn wood down. Um, but it didn't really work. Um, uh, so I used the, uh, the tube here to, to cut its own hole. Plastic is getting stuck, and it's sticking to the edge of the uh, tube. And as the, with a force from the uh, hydraulic press, it's um, kind of squirting up the sides and, and kind of jamming all the whole thing together quite quickly. Um, it's possible we could uh, we could heat the, the metal uh, tube to re re uh, release it easier, and maybe even have a, fo a foot on it. So you could press the plastic together, and then raise the foot up, put something under it, and have the, the press. Um, squeeze out the uh, local plastic, maybe, and this so, or to stop it sticking, uh, it doesn't seem to stick to uh, greaseproof paper at all, which is nice, that's why it has worked in the square mould, so I'm thinking about making a slightly deeper square mould, that could probably work, um, I'm just thinking round because it would uh, minimise the amount of um, material we need to get around bullet for um, End caps. Yeah. So yeah, that's a work in progress. That's so it was maybe a bit cool when I squashed it in the square mold afterwards. Just to get something done with the plastic. But seems to bond fairly nicely. That's high, high density polyethylene. Uh, you've seen the uh, um, polystyrene uh, made from a printer case. Have you got spinning it down just into a random shape to see how it machined? Um, it does seem to machine. Um, it is possible. I had problems with it um, heating up with friction. This has got a very low melting point, like 100 degrees or so, polystyrene. Um, so it was melting with the friction from the tool as it was spinning. So potentially, if I was going to use this, um, we could have it running in a, a, a water bath. Maybe with a cover to catch the splash or something. Maybe it's a lot, it's a, lot um, a lot more rigid than high density polyethylene. So it might make an interesting test for end caps. Possibly the uh, O-rings are feeling on failing on the high density polyethylene because it's uh, stretching. So we can test that. Also made some melted down Hoover. So this is made from ABS. Um, I'll chop up some more and, and make another block. So I was trying to make a um, block about an inch thick uh, to make an end cap, um, and this is only like a half inch. Potentially, I could uh, uh, do two of these blocks and sandwich them together once they're heated. Uh, temperature might be too hot on this one, maybe it's kind of. I had to turn it up a bit to get it to stick. And so that was more like 230 degrees. Uh, kind of depends what ratios of plastic it's got in it, I think. But this is uh, a lot tougher than uh, polystyrene, which, which seems to be a bit brittle and breakable. This is other stuff to make it more rubbery, more resilient. Uh, so it would be an interesting one to try. Um, new sensor, pressure sensor for the test chamber. Um, so uh, yeah, I'll read the data sheet a few more times. It's going to be fairly simple to uh, interface it with the Arduino. Ground referenced. Speed at a supply voltage of like 10 or 12 volts. And it puts out a voltage. It keeps, turns up the voltage until um, the current flowing through this circuit is um, what its output is. So it's at full scale it should be 40 milliamps and it'll start at 4 milliamps. So in between this is a, a 0 to 60 bar, so at 0 bar it will be 4 milliamps output, and at 60 bar it will be 40 milliamps. And they're flowing through there. Calculate just basic Ohm's, Ohm's law, the resistance I'm getting is uh, 125. Wiki was thinking it would be 250. I need to 
double check my numbers. Um, so yeah, that's hopeful. Um, to get some more data out of the test chamber for squashing stuff. Uh, this is the um, end cap that Andy printed from uh, PLA. So it's been sitting in this bath of um, caustic sodium, so, uh, sodium hydroxide. Uh, I think I got it up to it's quite thick, uh, 300 grams in a litre of water. And apparently, I think water is not the correct solvent to use. This was very slow. It's been in there a couple of weeks only because I haven't got around to testing it, but it took about a week to dissolve the 10% uh, fill and two shell uh, 3D print. This is just a test one because we know it's not going to be the right size but filled up with layers of um, GRP and uh, polyester resin to see if we can make the end caps out of fiberglass directly and then dissolve a mould. A bit scary this stuff. <laughs> Drain cleaner, um, uh, caustic soda, I don't know. I'm not sure about this technique. I'm experimenting. This one was a little bit too, the mould was a bit too small, the o-ring is going to be a bit sloppy I imagine, it should be. Hmm. Pretty reasonable. Can, uh, that's pong from the resin. detail you can see the uh, the print lines fairly well we've had it cut up correctly in the in the slicer I think it might be possible to get the printer to go all the way around because there was a there was a flaw in the print where the, the printer was uh, printing so far and then coming back and then that run did the spirals quite pleased with that Okay, that's ho hopeful, apart from the horrible chemicals that I'm a bit scared of. Uh, let's hope, and maybe also um, it might be difficult to do the, um, the through hole connectors, although you could just drill straight through and clamp it with a, a bolt and fair seal tape or something. It's an option. Uh, obviously, there's no hole in the middle either, which might be an advantage. We can sand off this rough edge. Very straightforward. <laughs> well, okay, that's pretty good. I like it. That was really neat fit. The um, the extrusion gap, uh, the so basically the clearance between the um, uh, the outside of this and the inside of the tube is too big. So maybe might be right. It's quite a fat ring. But it's a good idea to try and minimise the extrusion gap as much as possible because it means that the force of the pressure can uh, squirt out the o-ring. be interesting to see what this uh, bevelled edge, what effect that has on the o-ring seal as well. So that's... Hmm... That idea is a possibility. Um, it is possible to get um, a water-soluble uh, 3D printer filament so I'm thinking about having a go with that. Um, PVA, uh, polyvinyl alcohol. And then you obviously don't need the caustic soda. Um, or maybe the caustic soda with um, a different solvent. 
uh, like maybe acetone or something, but the acetone reacts with uh, the resin. I don't know. There's, there's yeah, probably the water soluble one. That's surprising how neat that is. I mean, it's a bit, a bit messy stuff to work with. The resin. But if you can just print your end caps. Makes them that solid. There's obviously like to be very little flex in this as well. If these do seal nicely, there's very little flex. Absolutely solid. And maybe not using chop strand mat to fill them. You could use a, a casting resin and a uh, um, chopped uh, microfiber filler. And then you wouldn't need all this heavy stuff, like cut discs uh, of chopped strand mat to fill it up, uh, which is a bit of a faff. So, yeah, if it was easier and less chemically, I would go with that, if possible. Um, these little turned end caps of plastic -y is also quite simple. Awesome. Right, I might um, chop up some more plastic and uh, stick it in the oven. Yeah, this is just um, ABS from Hoover. So most of the uh, plastic parts seem to have um, either the recycling symbol or printed somewhere the um, the plastic designator for recycling, which is handy. Um, they don't tell you they actually bla uh, the blend of plastic because uh, ABS can be a, a different ratio of um, um, so ABS apparently is um, acrylonitrile. Uh, polybut uh, polybutanine and polystyrene blended together. So the major component is uh, polystyrene, uh, polystyrene up to 60%, 60 to 40, and then the acrylonitrile is the other major component, and the uh, the polybutanine is um, a minor component, at like 10% or so. Um, apparently, it has um, flexibility and impact resistance. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a lot harder, stronger, tougher than um, polystyrene. Even the polystyrene, you know, once it's melted down into a solid block, is very usable. It'll be interesting to see how the um, ABS uh, machines. Uh, but um, well, I'm going to wash it up anyway. I'm just going to cut it up with a jigsaw and put it in a, an old pillowcase and shove it in the uh, uh, washing machine. See if we get rid of this. Wrap it on the bits of muck. Being clean. Melt them down, squash it, put another layer in, squash it down. And this one's been squaring out the sides because I guess the mold's not very, uh, not very tight tolerance between uh, the the lid piece and the sides. So possibly, if I want to make a thicker one, you know, just by uh, increasing the height of the wall, might do it. Or uh, decreasing the the gap in between might allow us to get more plastic in because we also need an inch. I reckon it's a good target for uh, end caps. Um, maybe yeah, just a square one. On the square one, you can just fold the uh, fold the paper in, which you would really struggle to do that with the uh, with the round mold uh, as well when it's squashing down in a circle. Um, yeah, no experimenting required, but quite pleased with the result, and I'll maybe do a, do a little bit of turning it in a minute. Bits of a hoover, uh, shove them in there. 
was a bit of an experiment as well. I didn't want to release lots of plastic chunks inside the uh, washing machine. The zip tie. I have tried um, a releasable zip tie. I have tried uh, tying things before in the, in the washing machine and it seems to undo the knots. So I'll try the zip tie. It's also very hot. Also a 60 degree poly cotton wash.